Hi, I'm Jacob. This is the Preppers Bunker, Tactical Tuesday. And today, I wanna to talk to you about why gun ownership is your responsibility as a human being. Now, I'm going to try and keep my thoughts concise. I have two points to make. Uh, these thoughts came about uh, from two different uh, scenarios. Uh, one, I'm full-time in college, about to get my uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, we, I wrote an article about uh, a school shooting in Virginia where three armed students uh, subdued a shooter armed with firearms. And in response to uh, the post that I made, another person said that as a mother, uh, they find the idea of their children uh, of unknown age going to a school where, where either students or faculty are permitted to legally carry a firearm uh, is disturbing. And I replied to her that the concept that you would put your children in the hands of people who are unarmed, who do not allow your children to defend themselves, and who will take no responsibility for your children's well-being in a target-rich, gun-free environment is disturbing. Um, which, this maybe this is a little bit of the, the military background here, but as I understand it, you can delegate authority, but you cannot delegate responsibility. For instance, in the military, if uh, a captain tells a sergeant that he has to accomplish a task, and that sergeant then tells a private to accomplish that task, and it is not done correctly or not done at all, when the captain asks the sergeant why things were not done correctly, if the sergeant says, oh, I told a private to do it, the captain does not go talk to the private. The sergeant gets in trouble, and if that goes down to the line, which it will, down to the private, then so be it. But ultimately, the responsibility, regardless of who performed the task, was the sergeant's because it was his responsibility. It was given to him. Now, how this works in today's concept or pertaining to what we're talking to is when you purposefully and thoughtfully make the decision to be unarmed and to go in other places that are unarmed and to go into places where nobody's allowed to be armed, you are choosing to put yourself at risk, and if you are shot and killed, your well-being... Okay, you wanted to give responsibility for your self-defense to a police officer. The police officer is 15 minutes away at the least, and it's not his fault when you're dead. You can't blame anybody for your death when you're dead. Likewise, I remember in the Colorado shooting, there was a father who brought his uh, children and family to watch the midnight premiere of Batman uh, in Colorado. I don't know if I already mentioned that. And uh, people were blaming him. Him and his whole family were killed. People were blaming him for the death of his family because he shouldn't have had his family out that late. Um, now, the ultimate, the ultimate burden, the responsibility for blame, all of that goes to the shooter. But when it comes to the death of his family, it's not his fault because they're out at midnight. It's his fault because it is a father's responsibility to protect his family. And they all died because he dropped that responsibility and tried to hand it off to someone else. Which brings me to my next thought. I was on Facebook uh, on a chicken page because chickens are cool. And someone made this rant about how if their dog escaped and killed somebody else's chickens and they shot their dog, that they would then, in turn, go shoot the person who shot their dog. 
Now, of course, anybody with any rational ability would understand that if your dog escapes because you aren't responsible enough to keep it and your neighbor kills it, you killed your dog using your neighbor. Kind of like if I go punch a cop and then try and take his gun, I committed suicide by cop. I killed myself, I just used a cop to do it. But uh, in response, I, I responded to this and she eventually said, uh, well, she, she made the point that if a dog was attacking her son, that she still would not kill it. Okay. And then she made the point, what would I do, run into my house to grab a gun? And I responded to that, uh, run into my house to grab a gun? What do I look like, a slave? And here is the case in point. If you do not take responsibility for your own self-defense, if you give that responsibility to someone else, you are a slave. A slave, being a slave, is the extreme lack of freedom. Every time we relinquish, freedom comes with responsibility. They are inseparable. When you give up your personal responsibilities, whether it's for going to a job and making money, health care, food, the right to defend yourself, the right to defend your property, whatever it is, when you give up that responsibility, you are becoming a slave to the state. At this point, you are livestock. You are literally an animal that is breeding and being bred for the purpose of generating revenue for the state. Now, the problem here is that the reality of the Second Amendment and the reality of what's left of our freedom in America has been demonized. And my example of that is when James Yeager said that, uh, to summarize, if things were to get worse politically if uh, they were looking to confiscate guns or pass further gun laws, whatever, that it was time to pack up your bug out bags and start killing people. Okay. And the whole gun community, gun community jumped on his back and ostracized him and uh, basically just hate him for saying that because uh, they want to say that makes him look like an extremist. They say that uh, sensible gun control is the answer. Uh, and a lot of people within the community think that people shouldn't be able to carry guns unless they've had X amount of training or meet X requirements. Here's the problem with that. We have allowed ourselves as American people and as patriots to accept a watered-down definition of our Second Amendment where it somehow has to do with self-defense. Your Second Amendment rights have absolutely nothing to do with your self-defense. It has absolutely nothing to do with your concealed carry permit. Having a concealed carry permit is contrary to the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment exists so that when your government steals your responsibilities and your freedoms, you have the right to overthrow that government. That's why you have the Second Amendment. Show me a time in history where a well-armed and well-trained population was repeatedly and constantly abused by its government, I guess outside of us here in America today. People act like communism and statism has never actually been done before, this, that, and the other thing. The only thing that's never been done before is people actually having freedom and government actually being small. So the only thing that keeps our freedom in America is the fact that we are armed because the government does not want to die. When our founding fathers created this nation, they knew that governments had their own interest in mind, were self-defensive, 
and to be self-defensive was contrary to an American people being self-defensive. Abraham Lincoln, when the government fears the people, there is freedom. When people fear the government, there is tyranny. Everybody and their mother is afraid of their government, afraid to do whatever they want. We live in a nation that has accepted its own slavery. And in fact, on the topic of slavery, we have, we continue to have laws in Democrat areas with strict gun control that were created specifically to keep guns out of the hands of black Americans. Look at North Carolina's uh, uh, handgun permit, okay? It was specifically created to keep guns out of black hands. And yet the Democrats continue to support these bills and the people don't understand enough about their own freedoms that or they don't want freedoms because the responsibility associated with it to get rid of these people and get rid of these laws. So what we have today is we have a massive, uneducated, irresponsible body of uh, ignorant people who are lazy who do not want to take responsibility for themselves, like the mother in question for my school post, don't want to take responsibility for their own safety, don't want to take responsibility for anything, who support these laws without understanding what they entail, who uh, have no concept of history, have no desire to have any concept of history, have no concept of the politics at hand that are going on today, but understand uh, they they understand about guns in a context of what they see in Hollywood, and they understand their emotions. They are emotional thinkers. They cannot self-actualize. And this majority of our population is incredibly willing to give up every freedom and every responsibility so that they can be more ignorant and more lazy. Education is the key. Educating our children how to properly use firearms safely and educating our children on history and educating our children on why our freedoms exist as they exist. The problem is, and I don't understand why, why nobody can figure this out, the second that we give that education over to the federal government, which is self-protecting, all of a sudden we don't know crap about history. We don't know crap about our own government or politics or how things work. Well, you know, uh, like my father's generation grew up with um, that little cartoon about how a bill was made and this and that and the other. And now nobody has a clue. People think the Supreme Court can make law and people think that the president can make law. None of this is how it works, but nobody cares because they have no idea how it's supposed to work. They have no desire to learn how it works. They have no desire to understand the history behind how it works, why it works that, and the history of the other nations that have failed because of statism. So, the bottom line. If you do not take responsibility for yourself, you are a slave. But here in America, every single person watching, unless you are a felon, legally has the right to go get a firearm, to go get training, and to carry it if you are 21. There are exceptions in communist states where everybody has already become slaves. So I guess I shouldn't have said everyone. At the end of the day, everybody wants to put, the, the gun community that was so mad at James Yeager exists because they want to put limitations on other people's rights based on their criteria for safely carrying a firearm. They think that you should have to have training to carry a firearm. You should have to do X, Y, and Z. 
you should be X, Y, and Z. At the end of the day, every single person has a right to carry a firearm. It is a God-given and unalienable right to self-defense of yourself and your property. Again, that's protected by the Second Amendment, but that's not what the Second Amendment is about. And you don't have the right to dictate at what point someone else has earned that right. It is inalienable. You don't have the right to say what training they have to have. The government doesn't have the right to say what amount of training they have. And the problem is the gun community, these people who are supporting sensible gun control laws, concealed carry laws, etc., etc., are empowering the enemy who is disarming the American people because if they can put their criteria on who can carry and when, well, why can't, why can't the Democrats, the Socialists, the Communists, it's all the same thing, why can't they put criteria? Oh, you have to be in the military, you have to be a police officer, duh, uh, duh. As if police officers have excellent firearms training, they absolutely do not, as a general rule, or even military has any amount of training for carrying in a civilian environment. They don't. So the gun community yells at people like James Yeager or myself and says that we are empowering the Democrats and taking away our guns and gun rights because we sound too extreme. Now, by the way, this sounds like a lot of Christians today, but that's for a whole different deal. The reality is that they are empowering the enemy by placing standards on others that they don't believe should be had for themselves. That's what this all boils down to. Everybody thinks that they have the right to carry a firearm, but they're not so sure that their neighbor does. So they're okay with legislation that might disarm their neighbor. That's why repeatedly we see Democrats who do conceal carry, who do murder people, even illegally, conceal carry illegally, obviously murder is illegal, who are in arms trade themselves because they believe that they have the right, they can do it, but they're not so sure about you. So at the end of the day, take responsibility for yourself. When I walk into town, first off, I'm not going to gun-free zone. So if your store is a gun-free zone, can I carry into it and not get caught? Yes. Am I going to? No, because you don't deserve my money. You deserve to rot. But don't go to gun-free zones. That's the other thing. Everybody recently is all freaked out about this terrorist attack at some anti-American, commie, refugee-loving, freaking hippie pop singer place. It is sad that those people died, but uh, how about take responsibility for your own well-being and don't go to gun-free zones? How about arm yourself? How about get trained? Everybody is talking on social media right now about how terrified they are. Well, that's the point of terrorism, for you to be terrorized terrified and guess what you're terrified because you would rather die than take responsibility for yourself you slave farm animal let me know what you think in the comment section love having you guys i'll have to do another video or 10 probably to explain or extrapolate on what i've said what might be wrong or what might be misunderstood Whatever. Um, have a great day. Thanks for watching.